Coming up on Tech News Today, the three strikes law begins in France. Is this the rise of the black market internet? Also, the Windows Phone 7 has a video and we check it out. That's a pun you'll have to watch to get. And Mozilla is building a phone. He isn't building I'm going to build a phone now. Watch the show. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Friday, September 24th, 2010. Tech News Today is brought to you by iPad Today. Like iPads? Like apps? Like caps? Two out of three ain't bad. Catch iPad Today Thursdays at 1.30 Pacific at live.twit.tv. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. And behind the boards, our excellent producer, Eric Lanigan. One last time. We're going to miss you on Monday. Yeah. We'll get more about what's up in store for Eric Lanigan at, at, yes. at the end of the show. What's this is our store? tease. <laughs> will he live at the end of the show? <laughs> Find out. Uh, also joining us, very happy to have Callie Lewis from Geek Beat TV. Hey, hey. Callie. Hey, everyone. I love that music. Just really gets you moving. That Dan Luters, man. He's good. <laughs> I thought you said that. I know. Darn. I, I thought he said something else. His name is Daniel. I was like, well, that's a strange way to thank somebody for a kid. That Dan Looters. That Dan Looters. He is <laughs> really talented. Dan, he is talented. He is. It's it's a good it's a good theme. I can't help but dance. I like it. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you like it, Kelly. And it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for being on. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, you can find Callie on Geek Beat at geekbeat.tv. It's a Revision 3 show. Uh, comes out weekly, right? Three days a week, actually. Three days Monday, a Wednesday, week. and oh, Fridays. Shoot. She's very busy. No kidding. Well, no wonder <laughs> you're so busy. Uh, <laughs> let's get let's get into the, uh, the news. NBC has announced that they are going to unleash a bunch more shows on the Netflix. They had some shows up there. I, I caught up on 30 Rock, actually, by watching uh, Netflix streaming. But they are going to uh, give... A lot more episodes from the past 35 years, hundreds of episodes of Saturday Night Live, uh, all the previous seasons of 30 Rock, The Office, Law & Order, SVU, which also make, always makes me think of SUV. Like it's law and order being done. That's out of what that. I always, I'm always saying that in my head. SUV. Yeah. Oh yeah. Special victim. Also uh, the entire series of Battlestar Galactica, the reboot, the sci-fi series, uh, Monk, Friday Night Lights. So it's essentially. Uh, all this does is make your $10 a month subscription all that sweeter. And. $8 a month. $8. $8. I thought it was nine ninety nine a month. Starts at eight ninety nine. Well, there you go. Right. <laughs> okay, so nine dollars. We ain't. We're not the Canadians. Right, right. We don't get okay, the discount. Okay, I can't count. <laughs> it's okay. We we, just keeps we met in the better. middle. I love this. In Canada, it's less though, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, in Canada, it's uh, it's seven dollars, and they offer a streaming only plan. That's the that's the seven dollar plan. So that's where they're they're saving money because they're not actually mailing anything physical to anyone. Uh, it's, it's a cheaper business to run when you're when you're just pushing digital. Exactly. Copies. And Reed Hastings, uh, because we mocked him so much yesterday about talking uh, smack about Americans. In his interview. Well, because we're so self-absorbed, according so, to Reed Hastings. He posted an apology to the uh, Netflix blog and also said, we're looking at adding a streaming-only option for the USA in the coming months. I'd want it. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. See, I, we, we have the one DVD right now, and I'm not sure if I would downgrade or want to keep, or, or keep an option to have some of those DVDs that aren't streaming. I feel like one well, DVD is exactly where I want to be. I have to admit something. Maybe I shouldn't admit it, but I the now only reason to. I right <laughs> the only reason I would not go to the streaming only version is because sometimes I like to you know keep the DVDs so so to speak. Right. Right. That. You mean you, you never send them back, Callie? No, 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 I send them back. You mean you make backups in case they get damaged before you finish of course. watching them? Well, you take the DVD out on the town, maybe stop by a few friends' houses <laughs> right. so they can see you know, the DVD. Just right. share the love. You can capture the stream, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, so, thing. you know, I mean, that's that's the only reason I probably wouldn't. But there are there are some, and the other, the other reason would be that there are a lot of movies that aren't available on streaming only. So yeah, exactly. you miss out on do. a catalog. Totally. Yeah, a streaming only plan that uh, included all of the titles that 
that that Netflix offers, I'd be on board in an instant. That's actually the only way I use Netflix because it's built into my Bravia. It's perfect. Love it. It's going to be built into the Apple TV as well. It's built into the Roku. It's in a bunch of televisions. So uh, a streaming-only plan actually might be a really good idea for Netflix because folks who buy those TVs and, and Apple TVs and say, oh, I think I might want to sign up for this may not want to sign up for having to get a DVD. Right. They may just want right. to have this streaming thing. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Zucker, by the way, from NBC, uh, the same day they announced that they're going to unleash all this content onto Netflix, said, by the way, I'm leaving. Soon as Cable Town takes over. And this is the same Zucker, yes, not to Zuck be confused with Zuckerberg. Right, There's I just a earlier. lot of Z's in the news in the last few days. Uh, is the uh, did not want the Apple TV to be to be leasing out NBC programs for ninety nine per episode. Yeah. So wait a minute. What makes it? Uh, what, what makes it? Okay. He said, "I don't want to participate in the Apple TV program because it devalues the content if you rent it out at ninety nine cents an episode." But with Netflix, he's given them all these extra shows, and Netflix doesn't pay per episode. Right. Netflix just pays a flat fee to NBC. What uh, what I want to know is what does net uh, what does NBC pay Netflix per month? Because we're paying Netflix what eight ninety nine per month. Unless you're Canadian. Unless you're Canadian, <laughs> or seven ninety nine. So there's a flat fee in in either case. Because you know the only way that NBC is losing out. I mean they're so they're not comfortable with the just buy an episode here and there model because they don't think that people are going to be, or I'm sorry, lease an episode here and there because they don't think that it's going to add up to what, $9 a month? I mean, it'd be pretty easy to do that. That would make sense if that's what they thought. If they looked at the, the math and said, well, it just doesn't, we just won't make as much money. But that's not what he said. He said renting it at 99 cents devalues it. Giving it as a flat fee also would, by that that's logic, what, devalue it. That's what it? I'm saying. I mean, it's only really devaluing it from the deal that they already have with Netflix if people drastically reduce, uh, I mean, just aren't uh, renting that many episodes, individual episodes of shows. Yeah. I think that was just an offhand comment that really had no basis whatsoever. I mean, I, I can't really figure out his logic, but maybe they just really want to keep it focused on one area. I, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either, but it, maybe that's their goal. Yeah, because I've always said you want to be in as many places as possible, uh, especially if you're an NBC Universal and you're trying to fight piracy. You want of to course. you want to put that video out so people don't have to turn to illegal means to get it. Uh, but the whole idea of uh, being available everywhere scares them. Right, because, yeah, I know. Because I, it leads to piracy. You, like, in their minds, this is the way I think about, uh, think that they're thinking, at least, is that in their minds, like, they're they're saying, well, if we're going to be everywhere, then everywhere means piracy. Right. It, it's sort of the theater model, right? Which is like, oh, if we're available in a bunch of theaters, then that's that many more cameras that might have a chance to, to capture us and put us out into the street on VHS tapes. But we're right. talking about the internet. It only takes one copy. To actually seed the pirating. Right. They don't, and, and that's it. It's over. It's the deregulation that makes uh, big companies like this nervous because they're, uh, they're in too many, they, they've got too many little estuaries out of the main river, you know, that nice. they're not in control of. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> river analogy. <laughs> I could, Doesn't work all the time. But, we could run with that. Yeah. There's a, there's a whole wetlands analogy to be had. There, there. you go. Uh, mm -hmm. The ecosystem and all of that. Well, in France, they're just deciding to dredge a canal. Instead of playing in the estuary, uh, the Hadopi law, if, you, if you've heard of it uh, referred to that way, it's France's three strikes law. Uh, so if you get accused without basis of copyright infringement three times, you get put into essentially a traffic court situation where a judge decides whether you're guilty or not. And if you are guilty, you lose your Internet connection for a year and no one can give you a new Internet connection. Uh, until so how it's are over. how are they planning to find all of the copyright infringers in France? Today it begins with ten thousand IP address requests a day to different ISPs. Oh my gosh, this sounds like the the uh, traffic cops who have some sort of a a quota <laughs> and they're just mean and they're giving yes. people tickets left and right so they can go home at the end of the day. They must uh, the ISPs must hand over the infringer's name or the alleged infringer's name, address, email, and phone number, but. 10,000 just to start. Don't worry. It's going to go up to 150,000 within a few weeks. How can they possibly <laughs> stay on top of that? I mean, that I'm, I'm serious. 
Yeah. That's totally impossible. How, how many people must they employ? I mean, this is a, what, the, the, there's been a private firm hired to handle this from the French government, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. I, I, they have to employ an army of mice or something just to push the paper around. <laughs> let's, let's clarify one thing, though, real quick, because, so they're starting with 10,000 requests. These are requests that are, that have had complaints of some sort, correct? Right. This is not 10,000 people <laughs> losing their internet connection. That's a good, very good point. These are, these are requests for IP address so that they can then further investigate and decide to send the notification. You have to get three notifications before you go in front of the judge, and then the judge has to decide whether you lose your internet address. It'll be so really person, your internet connection. So one person has to go through that 10,000, you know, like has to be complained about, and then that goes into the 10,000 group, which then gets requested, which then gets uh, <laughs> like um, uh, thought about, essentially, and then they send the notice. Yeah. What That's are, what's nuts. the population of France? I know, exactly. They're going to run out of people to uh, send notices to. 62 million. Well, they've got a little time. Yeah. 150,000 a day, though, they're going to catch up and fast. <laughs> there are going to be a lot of angry French people. You know what's going to be interesting, I think, is let's say the first... 415 days. Okay, well... We've got a, got a good solid year left, France. Once you get up to speed, Go for it. 415 days. What'll be interesting, I think, is after the first wave of notices start going out, how that affects uh, piracy levels, piracy numbers. Yeah, you know what it's going to affect? It's going to affect encryption levels. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot more people using VPN in France after that first notice goes out. Uh, and also a point on this Slashdot posting from Timothy, uh, to put this in perspective, well, I think he's quoting from a story, but to put this in perspective, Time Warner only has to give up 28 IP addresses a month. That was decided in court because it was too costly uh, to actually go after more than that. That was too much. The courts determined that was too much of a burden. In France, it's 10000 to 150000 a day. And if they don't comply within eight days, they risk a 1500 euro fine. There, there's so much money being thrown at uh, uh, making a point, making an example out of its citizens yeah. over there in France. Wow. Well... It's I, I guess that's the biggest problem that France is facing. I would say at that it, at that rate, expect a notice any day, Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> well, one one other thing, you said that uh, no one will be allowed to offer them service. I mean, just that just sounds like some kind of black market, kind of some kind of uh, under the table <laughs> workings, just ready to be made. I am shocked, shocked to find there is internet connecting going on in here. Sacre bleu! <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, some way. Listen, Louis, I need a little ISP, <laughs> if you know what I mean. No, you're totally right. There's going to be a black market internet connecting going on. <laughs> it's going to be nuts. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you know, Facebook was down for approximately two and a half hours uh, uh, earlier yesterday. Uh, Facebook, it was also wonky for about two and a half days before that. Yeah. It's been weird all week. Facebook called it the worst outage they've had in over four years. Robert Johnson, you may know him because he sold his soul to the devil to play blues. And then later became a developer for Facebook. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's not the same Robert Johnson, now, now that I think about no, it. No, it probably is. <laughs> no. It probably it, is. Yeah. No, it must be. I mean, yeah. how many Robert Johnsons could Couldn't there be? Couldn't be, what, maybe three? Anyway, this Robert Johnson uh, posted a really good blog uh, posting on Facebook uh, explaining what happened. Essentially, they had an error checking system that went out of control because it was supposed to only work on errors that are in the cache that are very transient. But an error came in in their persistent store, which meant it never stopped it was, checking. It was the infinite loop. The error, it overwhelmed the database by hundreds of thousands of queries a second. Uh, and the only way they could stop the feedback cycle was to stop all traffic to the database cluster, which meant turning off the site. So they, they fixed it. They unplugged Facebook so it wouldn't burst into flames. For those of you who watch the <laughs> IT crowd, they tried turning it off and turning it on again. <laughs> Is Facebook plugged in? Unplug Facebook. Replug Facebook. Is it working? Okay. Hello, this is Facebook data center support. If you tried turning it off and turning it on again. <laughs> That's how they fixed it. But I love that. You know what? I got to give Robert Johnson props, uh, even though I, I teased him about his name. This, this is a great posting. This is very transparent. And for all Facebook's controversy over, like, forget about privacy. It's all about transparency. It's, it's nice to see it actually working the other way. Yeah, this is a good example of uh, the folks behind Facebook giving everyone all the information they need on what went wrong and how they uh, will try to prevent it happening again.
Yeah, so much appreciated. I was never affected by the great Facebook outage. Were you? No, because I don't go to Facebook. I, I go to Facebook not even once a day sometimes. How about you, Callie? Uh, yeah, I I didn't even have a clue that it was happening actually because I was uh, busy working on something else. So I think that's the answer. A lot of people were upset. I did notice after the fact, um, but uh, just keep yourself a little busy, and uh, maybe you won't even notice these things. Yeah, I went to, I went to Facebook yesterday morning, and it was fine. I, I guess I hit it, I timed exactly. it just right. All right, uh, Mozilla Labs is presenting a concept phone idea that has a lot of folks uh, buzzing. It's a presentation on the Mozilla Labs blog called Seabird. Uh, they call it a community-driven mobile phone concept. It's uh, imagining what future phone tech could look like, and some of the uh, some of the features of it are dual Pico projectors, uh, Bluetooth infrared dongle to more easily interact with apps and web interfaces. And uh, I like it so much because. It's the idea of, like, let's forget about what the carriers want or don't want to do with their services, and let's just build what would be a really cool phone. Can we talk about what we would do with dual Pico projectors? Well, uh, definitely with one Pico projector, I've always liked the idea of being able to take, like, movies off my phone and project them onto a wall. Sure. Some of these Pico projectors can do fairly large, like, 27-inch uh, pictures. Yeah, it's like as long as you've got a, what, fairly light, flat surface, you have a lot more, I mean, you don't have to actually carry on a device with you besides the phone itself. Right. But, but what about these dual, I'm just, I'm trying to think of, unless we're trying to, I mean, what, you have movies playing on opposite walls? Uh, two well, with, actually, if you look in the video, one of the Pico projectors can project a keyboard. Oh, that's cool. So you get a full QWERTY keyboard down got in front it. of you. So it's all oh, about, that is brilliant. it's all about the way that it's positioned. See, yeah. I never would have thought of that. That's great. Now, I now have you have to have a dock in order to position that correctly. But I, I love that, you know, uh, Facebook is working on a, a phone and everybody's working on a phone. But this one actually introduces something that no one else is really doing in a phone itself, uh, which is the Pico projectors. And that's cool. They uh, have you ever used one of those touch those projected keyboards where they, they sense that? How did how did you like it, Kelly? Um, it was fine. You know, I mean, it certainly doesn't have any tactile feedback, but with touch these days, uh, not a whole lot of people need it anymore. So I, I liked it. It was one of those really early ones that I tried years ago. So yeah, yeah. I think I tried the same one and I found it really hard to use. Like it, you had you? To, I had to type kind of slow. I don't know why. You're also a hunter and a pecker anyway. Well, I type slow enough. Yeah, you'd think it wouldn't make me type any slower, but I didn't it did. mean to out you on the show, Tom. Oh, I've been but... out before, Natalie okay. Del Conte. All right. She's probably a great typist. She is. She seems like she'd be like 100 words a minute. She never mocks mistake. me because I look at my hands when I type. Mm. Well, so do I. Oh, yeah. I'm going to start mocking you, too. That's just unacceptable, Tom. <laughs> I know. It, right? That's fine. Joy, there's a whole club. 2010, Tom. 2010. <laughs> Yeah. Is there a website do d dedicated to that? <laughs> Tom Merritt looks at not, his hands when typing. There will be shortly. Is. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be a Squarespace blog up any minute now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Apple is the most profitable of the smartphone makers. Uh, according to analyst T. Michael Walkley of the investment firm Canaccord Genuity, said in a note to investors that Apple sees a gross margin of 50% and operating margins of around 30% on its iPhone uh, within an industry where most people who make handsets just get about 10% uh, profit margin. So as a result, Apple took home 39% of the mobile phone industry's overall profits, selling around 17 million iPhones during the first half of 2010. This is the way Apple has survived in the computer manufacturing business too, which is they don't have the biggest market share, but they make a lot of money off the stuff they sell. Right. Is anybody really surprised at this Not number? at all. No. no. Not at all. In fact, uh, one of the interesting uh, notes in this article that I read was not only um, is their profit margin through the roof in comparison to other companies, but AT&T's situation with them, the subsidy um, uh, agreement that they have, AT&T doesn't even uh, uh, break even until 17 months into a 24-month contract. So when you're mad at AT&T for those two years you're locked into, well, there's a really good reason why you have that because they want to make a little money. Apple's taking all the money. Yeah, uh, Steve Jobs is just like wallowing around in a big pile of money in his office while AT&T's like just checking to make sure that you're, you've gotten like 
through your contract yet before they can scrape any money out of you, which is why they're so tight about allowing subsidies when a new iPhone comes out. Yep. So uh, Apple's rich, big whoop. AT&T <laughs> not getting that rich, but they still don't want to let go of the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, Apple holds around 2.5% share of the entire mobile phone market. They grab 40% of overall industry profits. That's how you do it. That's, uh, well, there's a word for it. But uh, greed is good, Sarah. Something like that. Something like it, that. No one else is really doing that, are they? I mean, any Nobody newer can. companies that are taking their model and running to, with it. You have to leave the technology market, like power companies, maybe. Are well, doing true. Stuff like true. That. Yeah, but I, I, no, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody is is squeezing out the uh, the money the way Apple is. We got uh, a video uh, look at thanks to some checks or some checks. Oh, I always want to say Czechoslovakia. It's not Czechoslovakia still. Still. It anymore. hasn't been for a long time. What? <laughs> it's Republic of Czech. The, Czechoslovakia the Czech. is just a more fun name. But yeah, it's just fun it's to up say. up to them. Uh, the Czech Republic. Anyway, some Czechs have put up a video of the LG E900. Check it. Check it out. <laughs> that was corny. Don't say totally lock corny. it out. <laughs> uh, so this is one of the first looks at, uh, I mean, uh, Windows Phone 7 phones have been leaking like a sieve, but this is one of the first looks at the LG phone in detail. It's actually a 20 minute long video, uh, but you get a really good look at, at how Windows Phone interface is going to look on a real phone. LG needs this. They, they need a shot in the arm. What do you think about this when you look, this is sort of the, the dashboard. We're at the beginning of a very long video. I didn't actually watch all 20 minutes of it, but it's it's more information than you would ever need. I mean, what, what's your what's your first response here? I, I played with it at South by Southwest last year. Gadget had it at one of their events. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't look that different in this video than it looked then. And I liked it, but it did. I didn't walk away wanting it. Right. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it worked fine. It was pretty. You liked it because what? Simplicity, nothing wrong, I nothing liked, stood out as yeah, weird. Or I, I thought it was a pretty design. I liked the tiles and how, you know, when you go into contacts, it does that WebOS thing where it takes your contacts from all different sources and, and keeps them together. Uh, it's It seemed pretty intuitive how to get around in it, uh, you know, and it's got the little flowy tiles and, and, and things, it, nifty effects and whatnot. But there was nothing after I finished using it that I remembered like, oh, I wish my phone had that now. Mm -hmm. Of course, it didn't have like the Xbox integration, which it does now. So maybe if I started playing games on it, I would like that. I'd like the idea to be able to pick up a game on my Xbox when I get home. I don't know how often I'd use it. Have you played with it at Cali? I have. I, I got my hands on it when, you know, uh, actually South by Southwest as well. They let me, you know, do a whole, a whole show on it. And um, it was... I, I really liked it. You, you kind of hit it on, on the head. It, really good design. Um, nothing necessarily to just drool over, except for the design. <laughs> no, no really good features. Uh, not, 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 I'm sorry, let me back up. It's not that it doesn't have good features, just features that you would want on every phone that you have. Um, but the thing is, what I'm really happy with with Windows 7 is... I'm proud of Microsoft for wiping away the old and just going new. And I was just really happy to see that. So I am kind of um, very into it just because of that one thing even. I, th I think Windows Phone 7 is going to improve Microsoft's uh, presence uh, mm -hmm. over Windows Mobile 6.5. I don't think it's going to dramatically change their presence uh it actually might have a better effect for lg than it would have for anything else if, if they're one of the first to market with these well i mean but it will i think where it'll it'll hit is um people who who aren't really technically savvy who know the microsoft name who feel comfortable with that because that's what they have at home you know i mean that's kind of where it'll be uh, be strong i think all right, let's uh, finish up with uh, Google and finally announcing the winners of its Project 10 to the 100th contest, which awards five different projects, a total of $10 million. The contest was first announced in 2008. Did either of you enter? I didn't. No, uh, I my didn't. my yeah. idea was good, but uh, I wasn't sure I would win the $2 million. Maybe next year. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't enter either. Callie, you didn't enter? 
No, yeah. no, I, I, I wouldn't dare. <laughs> I know. I, I don't think I could have topped these. The Khan Academy will receive $2 million toward funding its work on making educational content available online for free. Uh, first, All Capitals receives $3 million to enhance science and engineering education. That's Dean Kamen's uh, deal, first. Publicresource.org is getting $2 million to make the government more transparent. Schweeb receives $1 million towards marketing of their name. No, uh, towards uh, driving innovation <laughs> in public transport. It is uh, a good name. They develop human-powered vehicles. And the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences gets $2 million uh, to provide quality education to African students. Uh, they are located in Cape Town. So congratulations. Good make good use of the Google money. Will will you please? That's a good award to win. On, yes it is. On to the news fuse. The latest update for the PlayStation 3 adds support for 3D Blu-ray playback, but it also removes support for unauthorized third-party accessories, adapters allowing PlayStation 2 and Xbox 360 controllers to work on the hardware, as well as some devices that connect via USB no longer works. Perhaps Sony's afraid they're going to explode. They, in all seriousness, yesterday issued a warning about exploding third-party devices. You might be excited about Windows Phone 7, but don't expect to use it as your modem. Microsoft told Engadget that Windows Phone 7 officially does not support tethering at all, despite earlier comments by Brandon Watson that it'd be a network operator call on whether or not to enable it. Ooh, yeah. no copy-paste, no tethering. Ooh, sad. Microsoft has changed its stance on IE9. Uh, we said yesterday that you'd have to have Service Pack 1. Windows 7 users will not have to install Service Pack 1. Looks like IE9 will install any patches it needs uh, that you need in order to run the browser. If you have SP1, though, you can install IE9 without a reboot. Uh, but let's be real, folks. You should have Windows as up-to-date as possible. So if you don't have SP1, go get it anyway. Don't, don't worry about this IE9 thing. If you've ordered an Apple TV, guess what? Orders have been delayed until mid-October. Customers who opted for expedited shipping will receive refunds on shipping, so at least you have that if you're one of those folks. The delay comes very last minute. Apple's already started charging on credit cards, usually a sure sign that the device is on the way. No word on the reason behind the last minute interruption. Mm, it's black, too, so it's not the... That's not the color. No. A federal judge in South Dakota this week quashed a U.S. copyright group subpoena targeting Mid-Continent, an ISP in his state. Among the many reasons given for the quash, the fact that the subpoena was issued by fax was the most entertaining to me. <laughs> uh, U.S. Magistrate Judge John Simcoe said the subpoena was, quote, not in compliance with any of the four descriptions of Rule 45B2, and that's the rule that describes how subpoenas must be handled. Nothing good comes from a fax. Not anymore. No. No. Uh, robots. Robots may win the World Cup before the U.S. does. <laughs> Claude Samet, professor of computer science at New South Wales University in Australia and RoboCup regular, believes that robots will surpass the abilities of professional human footballers, that's soccer players if you're in the U.S., by 2050. He says that these advances will require major advances in perception, decision-making, learning, and cooperative behaviors. Go robots! You know, I love USA. my robots. I USA. think they're the best thing in the world, but that's not going to happen. Really? You're not going to cheer? You're not going to support the robots? In no, I'll support the robots, 2050? but I just don't see that they're, that, that's going, that, that, that technology is going to be there to She's a robust. play humans. <laughs> I, I build robots. I love robots. I just don't see it happening. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced Friday he was donating $100 million to Newark, New Jersey schools. Apparently the donation was going to be made anonymously because he was afraid of criticism that the money was meant to distract you from the movie The Social Network. Uh, the movie debuts in wide release Friday, October 1st. Do you think that he did want it to Why be? would that distract me? I'm like, oh, good, nice, nicely done, Mark Zuckerberg, helping out the Newark Even schools. though this movie I'm paints still watch the movie. an ominous picture of you, you're a good guy and you care about kids. Yeah. Uh, my opinions about people are formed in more complex ways than that. Right. Yes. Than PR moves. <laughs> Electronic Arts is bringing the first paid game to the Amazon Kindle. Woo! Scrabble for Kindle users. Five directional navigation shows up in the user's home screen right next to uh, the books. The game costs five bucks and is available for purchase today. Will we play Scrabble on the Kindle? No. Me either. Nope. No. No. But Don't it's like the it. right kind of game for the Kindle, so some people might. Can I just say that I've never gotten into the electronic Scrabble? I really prefer the analog Scrabble game. It's yeah. the only way I want to play it. I, I don't know what, what chip I'm missing They're in my brain. They're always sitting up there with your Scrabble board on your leg just in case. Yeah. Tom says, want to do the show? Not now. I'm playing Scrabble. <laughs> Who are you playing Scrabble with? <laughs> just, 
Just playing. She gets letters. I like the little wood wood she gets, letters. She gets mail. I've never gotten into the Facebook Scrabble. Eh. Anyway. All right. Uh, let's talk about this Adobe Plenoptic lens oh. to finish off with. Uh, this is a lens that allows you to refocus an image after it's taken. Uh, basically, a plenoptic lens is composed of a litany of sublenses, which allow the photons you're capturing to be recorded from multiple perspectives. And that means you get a lot more data in your image, uh, an infinite depth of field, meaning you can toggle at what distance you want your image to be focused after you've taken it. Uh, so Adobe is uh, getting into this plenoptic lens. They're not the first to do it, uh, but they are they are showing it off as one of the technologies that they're bringing to image editing. So to be able awesome. to capture an image, it is so awesome. Is is the lens bent? It is is it is it like an eye? Uh, it's it's a, a plenoptic lens, as, as I understand it, actually is inserted between uh, the regular lens and the sensor. I see. And so it has a lot of multiple uh, lenses in there. Burke knows a lot more about it than I do. Well, you know, it's got sixteen different. 19 different uh, lenses. So it's a compound lens, and it's behind your regular lens, right? No, they are the lenses. Oh, they are the lens? Okay. It's the lens itself, but there's 16 different points, I guess. Nin 19 different points. Uh, yeah. 19 different points. You know what's cool? If you can take a point from one end of the lens and a point from the other end of the lens and make some sort of a 3D motion between two images. Oh, uh, now you're blowing my mind. I know. I'm blowing my mind. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible or not, but if it is, I want to know about it. Remember, like, those Gap commercials? Remember when the... The 3D movement would happen when they would yeah yeah they, yeah. they would freeze mid jump and we all thought that was great ah oh, love to do that with my own images yeah if you'd be now, able, you'd be this, able to oh yeah this refocusing that happens is that done in software after the facts yeah that's why Adobe's getting in on it because they're yeah. they're going to give you that if you have a plenoptic lens they're going to give you the tools to take advantage of that so cool so basically you could refocus it from the eyes to the nose or something mm -hmm. even further apart yeah or do bullet and, time. And do we know how far advanced this is? Because, like, for example, Canon is working on all sorts of concepts. But uh, is this actually going to be coming to market? Or yeah, is it just I, don't, I don't see any release dates in this uh, write-up yeah. that I'm looking at. So, yeah, it's <laughs> a good point. All right, let's, uh, speaking of dates, move on to the calendar. All right, Target is confirming it will begin selling iPads on October 3rd. So if you're a Target customer, you can buy an iPad on the next trip. As yeah, as you wait till October third. They're going to give you a five percent discount if you use your Target card. Is that true? Yes. Good. It is true. Is is uh, does that apply to everything inside Target? If you have a Target store, I don't know if it always applies. Yeah. I mean, they made a big deal, but it about does it with to the, the iPad. iPad. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I don't go to Target very often because I don't have one near me. But that's the only reason. There's one in. It's uh, very convenient. <laughs> we'll talk about this afterwards. This is <laughs> about to be like. Well, there's one in Nevada when you're driving home. <laughs> I'm sure Kelly's very interested. Kelly, you have a Target nearby. You gonna buy, buy your next I... iPad there? I no, well, I certainly won't be buying another iPad. I don't need another one, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure they're offering the five percent discount just on the iPad. I would assume yeah, just be because great. they want to get into that market. This is a great story. Hold on to your hats because Facebook rival MySpace. Remember MySpace? Tom, are you looking for a hat to hold on to? Oh, yeah, there was a bunch over well, there. Well, you, you already know this story. Is going to host a live chat with the cast of. The Social Network on Sunday, September 26th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Cast members, everybody's there. Jesse Eisenberg, who plays Mark Zuckerberg. Justin Timberlake, you may have heard of him. Just little-known actor. Andrew Garfield, hey. Army Hammer, screenwriter Aaron Sorkin. They're all going to be on MySpace discussing the movie, answering fan questions, uh, and showing some clips from the movie. This could save MySpace. MySpace, back in the game. <laughs> We've got the Social Network. I just, I, it's, I, I mean, I... I think if, if you're, the, in the movie's gotten incredible buzz. I'm excited to see it. I, I'd love to see a QA and a with, with the folks involved with the movie, but I've kind of laugh at the whole MySpace part of it. Well, I mean, think about it. The movie's called The Social Network. <laughs> they have to do some kind of event on a social network. And it can't be on Facebook. <laughs> it's not going to happen on Facebook. <laughs> great but they could do it tw why aren't they doing it on twitter there are all sorts of uh, that's a good question you know right? cast kind of uh conversations with with twitter i think because twitter has multimedia uh well it doesn't have multimedia capabilities MySpace the way that, has this stuff. The way that yeah. yeah you could you could stream uh stream a chat and have a when is when is myspace gonna give up 
What is well, not friend, yet, apparently. Friendster has to give up first. <laughs> MySpace is like, we're not stopping before they do. We got the social network cast. Big day. Big day for MySpace. Um, and finally, Nintendo is apparently 121 years old. This was a tip from our very own chat room, wasn't it, Tom? Hate bad design tipped us off to this. Or wait, was it Virgil? I think it was Virgil that tipped us off I to this I think you one. said it was Virgil. Virgil on Twitter. Uh, hate bad design gave us the planoptic lens. I forgot to give him uh, credit for that. Thanks to both of you. Yeah. Uh, 121 years. How is that possible? They started in 1889 as a company that made Japanese playing cards. Wow. Yeah. Well, amazing. 121 palindrome year, so I'm into it, but I am very sorry, Nintendo, that we missed your 120th birthday last year. Yeah. We we'll won't try do to that remember again. for the 125th. We'll never forget your 120th birthday again, I promise. On to the voicemails. <laughs> you can give us a call. 260-TNT-SHOW is our phone number, if you'd like. Uh, this anonymous person from Wisconsin called and shared uh, some thoughts on why a Facebook phone would not be like the Microsoft Kin. Hey there, I'm one of your uh, anonymous callers. I gotta say, I think it's a little weird to compare the Kin to the Facebook front end that might be coming out. I mean, the Kin was super limited, and Microsoft gave on it gave up on it way early. On the other hand, the Android phone with Facebook, with the Facebook front end, uh, that has a, all the power of, of Android, plus it has Facebook. So that's really cool. That's totally different. Um, love the show. I'm glad you got a sponsor again. See ya. Bye. So it's a fair point. If we're sure, certain that Facebook is making a phone on Android, or if they're using Android, that they're using the full Android. I think he's got a good point. I think also uh, it's important to note, we weren't really compared. This is a, a, a story from a few days ago on a show that I was on. We weren't really saying, hey, this could be the next kin. We were uh, pointing out the kin as a marketing failure. Yeah, and, and as the idea of a feature phone that just tried to do social networking and not much else, which right. is one piece of speculation about what this phone might be. It, it, we, we get little more pieces more and more, but we actually don't know what, what kind of phone Facebook might be involved with. And there is a potential for a marketing success or a real misstep, too, because this stuff, it, it just, it depends on how consumers see the device. Is this, is this the right thing for me? The kin wasn't. Obviously didn't work out. And I think that's going to be a big part of uh, whether Facebook phone, if there is a Facebook phone, uh, succeeds ultimately. What do you think they'll end up doing, Callie? Uh, if they will, you cut out a little bit on the connection. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, it just what, what do you think Facebook will end up doing? Do you have an idea of, of where they would go with all this phone rumor stuff? Um, if they'll actually make a phone? Yeah, what I, kind of phone would they end up being I involved certainly, with? I certainly think that they might. It'll be mostly about Facebook. So, uh, I, because, like, just take the caller's um, phrase, well, and it has Facebook. I mean, I think, I think the that they on would there. rely on, you know, their their uh, view or their, their users to be like, oh, it has Facebook. That's all I need, you know. So I don't think that they'll probably go too strong on all of the other features that hardcore geeks would uh, rely on. Vic in Kent, UK, actually has an interesting uh, thought to throw in here as well. Regarding our discussion of INQ uh, having a rumored upcoming Facebook phone, this pretty much arrived two years ago in the form of the INQ1, a cheap, available free with a one gigabyte data and minutes plan and text for as little as 10 pounds a month. Uh, it was a slider feature phone, was a follow-up to three, that's a phone company, three's brew-based Skype phones. It had a very strong Facebook integration uh, with contacts linked to profiles, photo upload, etc. Unfortunately, the UI was a little unfriendly and the screen was terrible. It was followed by a candy bar and a QWERTY BlackBerry-style handset. Uh, it's like anything forthcoming will continue this budget trend. So I think maybe Vic has, has pointed the way. This is just going to be another in a long line, it sounds like, of INQ phones that integrate Facebook very deeply. Well, should we go on to Carrie, the medical records guy in Houston? Hi, he Carrie. wrote in. Yes. Hello, Carrie. He says, hey, TNT folks, I've got a theory about why the Verizon CEO might have been so awkward on the subject of an iPhone on their network recently. I'm a Verizon customer. I'm currently due for a phone upgrade. When I keep hearing rumors, though, about a possible iPhone on the network in early 2011, I'm hesitant to get another phone at least right now. I'm sure I'm not the only person in this situation. 
And with us coming up on the holiday season, I'm sure they'd rather have their customers buying phones now instead of the prospect of an iPhone after the big holiday season. Carrie's got a point, of course. Back off on the rumor a little bit. Hey, we're, I don't know, we're Verizon. We're not sure about any of this. Buy our phones. Although they, you could make the opposite argument of you might get people to come to Verizon if they thought, well, I can get an iPhone. Well, no, but you do hold off. You'd say like, oh, I'm not going to get into a two-year contract now. You're right. So, yeah, uh, I, I take it back. Carrie, Carrie he knows. He, 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 he's, he's certainly on the right track. It's, it's He's all, all knowing. There's the smoke and mirrors. They always this always, especially this time of year, everything gets weird. You know, we always try to do this. We always try to figure out, like, well, if they announce it a little later, does it help their bottom line? Does it help their sales? I think a lot of times, yes, they do consider that, but it's not the ultimate deciding factor in what they're saying. I, I take uh, these statements from the Verizon CEO to mean they're having negotiating problems with Apple over the terms. Right. of the service. There was an Apple Insider story that was pretty much saying the same thing today, that, you know what, Verizon and Apple must be locking horns a little, and Apple may go with somebody else. They may go with Sprint or T-Mobile if they, they go non-exclusive. Right. No one's got anything concrete to say because nothing's concrete. Right. Right. I'm just sick of the rumor at this point. Yeah, I kind of am too. I'm done. <laughs> That's it. We're over. <laughs> what does it mean? Double rumor. <laughs> Callie Lewis, thanks so much for being on the show. It was great having you on. My pleasure. Let people know uh, where they can find all the stuff that you do. Of course, I do a show on the Revision 3 Network, uh, three days a week called Geek Beat TV, and it's at www.geekbeat.tv, uh, twitter.com slash Callie Lewis. All right, and uh, thank you folks for watching. You can find us at twit.tv slash TNT. Give us a call, 260-TNT-SHOW, or send us an email, TNT at twit.tv. But before we go, this is Eric's last time producing the show. <laughs> Eric, no! It's a fun ride, but uh, onward to uh, Tech Talk Back. You guys can, uh, if you're interested to see me do that show, it's a call-in show. You can call in with your tech opinions and advice and things. Uh, find me on Twitter at Eric Lanigan, E-R-I-K-L-A-N-I-G-A-N, to find out uh, the day and time for when that's coming back. It should be weekly. All right, cool. so it will give you more time to do that. That's Yes, that's, that's, yes, that's, that's, that's exciting. That's the positive that's coming out. Jason Howell will be taking over the seat on uh, Monday. He'll be braving the smell of chicken poop to come down uh, up, all the way up to Petaluma. Oh. Yeah. Petaluma. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that was, I wasn't talking about you this time. I showered this morning, Tom. I'm sick of these. <laughs> we'll see you Monday, folks. <laughs>